All right, everybody. Hope everybody was do doing well this evening as the uh, Nook Nation Top 40 Tour rolls into the Steel City of Pittsburgh. We're honored to have you guys joining us tonight. We've got a lot of stuff to cover here, but we promise to have you in and out in just under an hour as we focused on Pittsburgh, where it's currently and how it compares to the rest of Pennsylvania, and then what the future holds for the residential and real estate market. Uh, guys, welcome to the Note Nation Tour. You can always uh, check us out at NoteNationTop40.com. We've got a variety of local and national investors joining us tonight, whether it's live here on Zoom or catching us live on Facebook or the replays on YouTube and Facebook and other places as well. Uh, always go to NoteNationTop40.com to schedule or join us at the rest of the cities as we've just made the halfway point. Uh, Pittsburgh marks city number 21 that we are focused on. So uh, we'll be discussing the statistics and the numbers of where the market's at currently and where things, uh, things are going. We'll talk about the second half outlook of 2020 and beyond. We'll also talk about future opportunities and where to look for those and how to get started in the, uh, the future opportunities that we're seeing out there. So uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm Scott Carson. I've been uh, the, an active real estate investor for over 15 years now. Uh, I'm known across the country as the note guy. Uh, excited to be here with you guys, but I've got over 16 years of experience in the finance, mortgage, and debt markets out there. I've bought over a half a billion dollars in debt for myself, over a billion dollars uh, in commercial debt with our students and other investors that we work with on a regular basis. I'm the CEO of WeCloseNotes.com, but I've been working and teaching with uh, other real estate investors how to capitalize on the different markets out there since 2004, so over 16 years of experience doing that. I'm the host of the podcast, The Note Closure Show, which has uh, just exceeded 30 million listens on our radio network. We do broadcast live in Pittsburgh as well on one of our syndicated radio stations across the country. But I, uh, besides just Pittsburgh, I do invest all across the country, roughly about 30 to 35 different markets, depending on what's going on. But Austin, Texas has been home for a long time, for me, since 2001. But I do invest on a regular basis. I go where the best options are. And Pittsburgh's been a great city for real estate investors over the last couple of years. And we'll talk about what the future holds here before too long. But anyway, our mission has always been to help investors to accomplish their goals and dreams and increase their wealth through debt investing. I got into buying distressed debt back in 2008 in the recession. That's what I've been focused on the last 12 years for the most part. That doesn't mean I don't end up with rentals. It doesn't mean I don't end up with property and do some rehabs and sales. I'm selling some properties right now that I've taken back. But there's a lot of opportunities out there in the debt side of things. And I'm one of the few people out there that are teaching this on a consistent basis that is focused on this niche, especially the non-performing side of things. So why am I doing this guys and gals? Because I love to work with investors. I love helping people find amazing deals. I love people, uh, love helping people to solve problems, whether it's borrowers that are in trouble or investors that are working through deals. I like to help solve problems. I guess you could say it's my love language as a fixer. Uh, I do believe that's going, what's going on right now is an amazing opportunity. Yes, we had an amazing opportunity 12 years ago and that market recovered. Right now, what we see going on is like exactly what happened in 2008. We see a lot of scare, uh, uh, fear, a lot of things happening that are going to cause long-term consequences as this continues to go on with uh, the pandemic. I'm also doing this because I was once a distressed borrower too. I was once in trouble back in 2002 uh, as I got into real estate investing, started doing things the wrong way. And lucky for me, I was able to bail myself out with some help. Uh, I empathize with those that are being laid off, those that are being that are facing foreclosure, those that are being evicted. Uh, I've been there, and it's not a fun thing to do. So I hope uh, tonight gives you some opportunities, whether you are facing those difficult situations or you know somebody, this is an opportunity to help them out there. Uh, because guys and gals out there, there is nothing greater than helping someone overcome an obstacle or achieve a goal or dream that they thought was once impossible. We all know this. Buying a fir our first home is often our biggest investment and it's often still the biggest investment for about 90% of the population out there. For a lot of people, that's now a nightmare with what's going on right now. That dream is turning into a nightmare. So I like to kind of help people get back on uh, the right, right path for the most part. So I do have a big goal. Uh, I set this goal uh, a few months ago as we we're getting into this thing, as I was recalibrating and looking at where everything is going, I've set a goal for myself in the next 12 months to help a thousand investors. And I, at the end, I'll invite you guys to be a part of that. If that's something that you're interested in as well too. So, um, but where are the opportunities? They're all over the place, everybody, everywhere there are deals. I don't care what asset class, what type of real estate deals you're looking for. If it's self storage, they're available. If it's multifamily apartments, if it's single family homes, if it's mobile home parks, if it's medical, if it's office buildings, if it's hotels, motels, I don't care 
what type of asset class that you're looking at or interested in. There are opportunities everywhere in the market right now if you know where to look. And well, the beautiful thing is the banks that are dealing with difficulties right now don't give a rat's ass about things. They don't care what color you are, how old you are, how much experience you have. That's the beautiful thing, everybody, is that right now there's a lot of opportunities because the banks are going to get desperate here in the next really less than 90 days, and that's going to move on to the next year. I don't care if you've been a successful business owner or a failed business owner. You've gone through divorce, gone through bankruptcy, gone through short sale. Right now are in forbearance. There's a lot of opportunities out there, and this is one of the beautiful things about the note investing side. We don't care what your credit is. Don't care if you don't have your own capital. There's so much money out there to tap into that you just have to know where to look and we'll talk about that a little bit here. So uh, whatever your goal is, guys, we all have different goals and dreams of what we accomplish with our asset classes. It's not just, hey, I don't think most people are like, I just like real estate. I like doors, I like fixing and flipping. I like picking out paint colors and dealing with toilet tents and trash outs or borrowers. No, we do what we do for a variety of reasons, whether it's A, to retire yourself, you know, or B, to retire your spouse or travel more. You know, maybe you've got kids you wanna put through school or help them graduate college. You know, maybe it's retire your parents, help them quit working or help them with a retirement strategy. Maybe it is to travel more and have more fun instead of work. Maybe it is just, hey, I need to buy a bigger house or bigger toys. Whatever your goal is, we all know two things. One, it takes money to do this. And two, you need opportunities. And real estate is still the number one way to build wealth out there. And what we'll get into tonight is some of the, the ways that literally – you are able to find deals because of everything that's going on in, in a specific niche, especially with all the forbearance agreements, the people are facing defaults, the banks that are in trouble. Nobody's talking about that. And you'll, we'll talk about that in a minute here, why the opportunities exist tonight for you. So uh, what do the national numbers say right now? Well, they say a couple of things. <laughs> they definitely say a couple of things. First thing, we're seeing one out of every nine people are unemployment. You know, we have an unemployment rate of 11.1%. We should have the new updated numbers coming out in the next couple of days from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, there's over 40 million people collecting unemployment right now. That number ebbs and flows, depends what's going on in the country. 52% um, of small businesses are expected to fail. And that number gets worse every day as more and more businesses are closing. Uh, more companies are filed bankruptcy. Uh, people are running out of their PPP payments and their loans. Um, people just don't have the extra reserves. <clears throat> to be you know, six months without steady income or let alone steady client base, all right? Uh, the sad thing is that before this all started, one out of 10 homeowners were already struggling to stay current. Most people don't know that. Yes, 10% of Americans were already roughly about 30 days behind on their mortgage. Now, currently right now, we're sitting at a 7.76 national mortgage delinquency right now. Um, that number keeps going up. As we stick into it, what is the numbers going to look like in the next week for July? I don't know. Maybe it'll look um, higher. I think it's going to be a little bit higher just because as things get delayed, people quit going back to work and the banks and the government keep kicking the can down the road. I think we're going to see that number climb. Currently, right now, as we sit today, there are over 4.1 million Americans currently in default. That means they're 90 days or more behind in their mortgage payment. Right now, 4.1 million Americans, okay? Now, if you look at the numbers from 10 years ago, it took 18 months to get to 1.6 million defaults. We're already three, two and a half times that number in a, you know, two times faster, okay? So keep that in mind. When what it took us 18 months to do, we did in six months. So there is gonna be a lot of opportunity out there if you know where to look. As they say, when there's blood in the water, you need it. Feast. If people are running in one direction, you run the opposite to take advantage of the opportunity to really create some win-wins out there. So we'll get into this in just a little bit. But literally, defaults, it's good paper, bad paper, all types of mortgages are defaulting. It's just not your subprime borrowers like it was years ago. Yes, even though we saw the biggest increase in June, a 21% increase on the non-prime stuff, as they call that, that's the subprime stuff. Prime loans also took a big hit, reperforming loans. Lenders are bracing for us to see roughly about 15 million mortgage defaults is what they're expecting, somewhere between 10 and 15. Okay, I think we'll be somewhere between 10 and 12. It won't be nearly as bad as it was a decade ago, but it's still gonna get bad in a variety of ways. The, the beautiful thing is that the government is extending things. You know, we've got a six month forbearance. 
uh, agreements or delay on foreclosures for government-backed loans. A lot of states have suspended uh, foreclosures or evictions for a while. So we're going to see what happens. The next 90 days are very, very critical to what's going to happen in this country. So let's talk about the housing hardship index. This is a great thing to talk about. Uh, Pennsylvania, uh, actually a couple of Black Knight put this housing hardship index. It uh, takes a look at default, unemployment, kind of ranks you on a state by state basis. Unemployment for Pennsylvania is at 13% across the board on average. Default delinquency rates at 8.56, you're a little bit higher than the national average. That puts Pennsylvania at the eighth highest when it comes to housing hardships, okay? Now that's for the entire state. Some obviously places are better than others, but this doesn't break it down on a city by city basis. So this just, just does it for the entire state. So you can look at that and figure out, okay, are we higher or lower looking at unemployment? And then you, if your unemployment's higher, your delinquency is gonna obviously be a little bit higher. Things like that. So looking at Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's actually started to get a little bit better. Uh, unemployment dropped from May to June, uh, full one, you know, one point from 13.6 to 12.6. It'll be hard to see what, see, interesting one to see what comes out here in the next week as the Bureau of Labor Statistics comes out with the July numbers here in the next week or two. But when you look at the Pittsburgh greater geographic area, you know, the United States here unemployment was at 13, Pittsburgh is at 13.3. This is basically May, I haven't figured it out, I uh, haven't calculated this yet for this month. But you can see it's gonna be similar very similar to what it is for everybody else out there. So Allegheny, Allegheny, 13.1, um, 11.6 for Butler, Washington County, 13.6, Westmoreland, 13.6, all right about that, you know, 13% roughly on average there across the board. Obviously, it's quite a bit more than last year, but that gives you an idea how P the Pittsburgh area ranks compared to the counties in and around it. All right, I always find this very interesting depending on the cities I'm looking at, especially this, the usually, the Butler County area and the other the areas that are doing better than most of the cities are often more the well-to-do, the higher priced areas, higher educated. Now let's looking at the uh, the foreclosure trends in Pittsburgh here. This is really track. Um, I pulled this up showing you kind of the price range of the homes that are already hitting the foreclosure market. Obviously you have some stuff in just about every price range except that 900 to 1 million mark. Uh, Pre-foreclosures everywhere, you do have some auctions basically at 500,000 below, but the biggest amount of pre-foreclosures you see are in that 100 to 200 range, uh, next fall less than 100, and then the 200 to 300 range. So that's the point. If you're gonna be looking at foreclosures, uh, there's that's where you're gonna see the most amount in that neck of the woods. Now, the nice thing, uh, when you look at the bank owned auctions, you can also see it's also older style homes, 1950s or older is where the biggest amount of foreclosures, the, so the older part of the city for the most part, not a lot of new builds, foreclosure. So um, I must be missing something. But anyway, uh, we expect to see delinquencies increase across the board. We saw 20% in, in June and May. We expect to see another increase in that as things get, as people get sick, people stay home, they're worried about the default rates. Uh, we'll probably see another 20% increase is what they've said month over month, with everything being crazy. And then you look at as the number of properties that are 30 days or more past due, but not in foreclosure, that's another 4.1 million homes that are rolling in the hamper, okay? Already 4.2, 4 million roughly in default. There's another 4.1 behind that, that's gonna be in the default aspect of things as of right now for the most part. So you see a lot of stuff changing. Things are getting ugly out there with you and all that. Now, uh, this is a, a nationwide map, kind of heat mapping what states have done things and which states haven't. The, the TAN are basically states that have not done anything um, as far as statewide moratoriums or default moratoriums, okay? Uh, people think Pennsylvania is dark green. There's been current statewide moratoriums. Obviously, there's, uh, the Governor Wolf extended the moratorium and evictions and foreclosures through August 31st. Uh, that obviously is even for even those that, I mean, obviously, government-backed loans have been delayed for a while, but this is for everybody out there. Expect, except that unless of course you were defaulting for other reasons besides uh, unable to pay rent or due to COVID related. If you were behind beforehand and you were out of work beforehand, that's not gonna work. Say, so, oh, COVID, I'm, I'm, I'm not be able to pay my rent because of COVID. No, you can still look at facing evictions and, and also look at foreclosures if you're behind before everything started, okay? So keep that in mind. Uh, obviously foreclosures are slowly coming back this is for the uh, weeks ending July 11th, so about a month old. 
we should have a new updated chart here in the next couple of days on this. But right now, Pennsylvania is about 5% of where it was beforehand in the foreclosure process of things, of processing foreclosures and evictions across the state. We all know uh, there's talk about an economic tsunami as foreclosures and mortgages sink underwater further and further. The beautiful thing is a, a big majority of Americans do have equity in their houses, somewhere between 10 and 20% across the country. That's on the higher priced homes, okay? The lower value, 200,000 and below, not a lot of equity, especially in the first time home buyers. When you look at where a lot of the loans that are defaulting, um, it's a lot of the first time home buyers. So as you look at this chart here, this kind of gives you a, a breakdown on where those type of loans are. FHA, obviously usually first time home buyers, they're at a, almost a 10% default rate, 9.69% currently. Um, when you compare that to the conventional loans, those are at 3.16, all right? Your VA loans at 4.65, your all the rest of the loans at 4.36, but weighted average is 7.76. Now, why the FHA? Well, a lot of those, like I said, first time home buyers, those are your entry level homes. People aren't going off a of credit score, but they're the most impacted by layoffs, by the you know, service industry, the travel industry, um, restaurant industry fall in that category a lot of times. Uh, and those are the loans that have defaulted most. And you also look at some of the lending programs over last year where a lot of lenders are willing to give that down payment of three and a half percent that's required by FHA. We're willing to donate that along with paying up to 10 grand in closing costs too. You can get somebody into a house, first time home buyer, nothing down. And they're not used to paying to stay. They have no skin, no investment. So that's not a really surprise. We'll continue to probably see that number climb as well. Um, we all know forbearances are on, on the increase and decrease. They vary from week to week. <clears throat> um, as things happen, obviously some spikes, some fall down. It uh, depends on what's going on in the market. Uh, they are simply saying that they, while there's about 4.1, 4.2 million people in forbearance currently right now, they expect to see at least there's probably another 4 million borrowers out there that haven't called their bank to negotiate out there as well. So this is basically the active forbearance. So that shows roughly about 4.6, 4.7 from June. Um, I don't have a chart on the July numbers yet, but I've been told it's been, it dropped down a little bit as some people went back to work. They started paying again, which is a good thing. Now, if they end up closing down the States again, we see that number is going to spike as well. Now, is that good news or bad news for you guys? Well, um, there are, Pennsylvania does have longer foreclosure timeframes. So it's good for the borrowers because they can kind of drag things out. Uh, but Pennsylvania does have a higher default versus the national average. So you're going to see some things happen specifically in Pittsburgh, also Philadelphia, but uh, I think Pittsburgh's more of a, definitely a blue collar city. It's got a higher default rate than in Philadelphia does. Uh, you also add in the fact that, especially with FHA loans, it's a 690 day timeframe to foreclose in Pennsylvania. You're seeing their backlog of forbearance agreements. Sorry, this is actually, Pennsylvania has used a judicial foreclosure, not a non-judicial, my apology. Uh, there's a backlog of forbearance agreements. So if you add in a year plus, almost two years to foreclose the FHA, plus the forbearance agreements, it's going to be a while before you see REOs, before you see foreclosures hit the market, 12 to 18 months. And that's because, A, it's just going to take that long to get through everything, and B, the banks are probably going to be moving a lot of stuff off their books to other investors that can make, uh, that can take the stuff down and do some sort of workout or work on the forbearance agreements. Okay. And trying to keep people in their houses. So let's talk about the commercial debt side. Uh, we know there's for rent signs all over the place as businesses are going out of business. Uh, we see 52% of businesses are expected to fail, if not get worse than that. When you have major chains closing their doors, failing to pay rent, it's really a no win for landlords, especially when you have evictions being suspended for a while. Uh, you know, for a, a while, we've had a commercial boom across the country, especially in the major cities. Well, we all know that's over. All right. We know that that's going to be a difficult time, especially in a variety of different asset classes. Uh, and this chart, which is just about a month old, anyone should be out here in the next day or so, talks about and shows you kind of the asset classes that are dealing with it with the worst. And you can see uh, that lodging, that's hotels, motels, are taking it the horrible thing. Retail has always had a rough time, especially the last couple of years, it's taken difficult. Others, it falls into your restaurant category. Um, you have student housing also, if all your health care is dealing with difficult. Single family residential is actually well below that compared to a lot of other places out there. In, in some of the stuff where it's actually the delinquency type, this is April, May, and June. But it's growing. It's growing at a dramatic level at the percentage of defaults across the country. 
All right, so commercial real estate is what's been hit the most. Now, in, in uh, March, the CMBS side, the commercial mortgage-backed securities lost $50 billion in value basically in over just a couple of weeks. If you look at this market on the top 15 areas, you know, Pittsburgh's not on there, but it's pretty close to what Philadelphia has. This just fixes the top 15 markets. Obviously, Pittsburgh's below that. But in the comparable side, from everything I see, it's roughly still got about a billion dollars in distressed commercial debt, private label commercial debt, that's going to be in a tough, tough place that already a big chunk of it is already. Um, it's already having a profound effect, especially on the uh, I was likely to derail the market, but extent of damage remains impossible to gauge. It's still too early to tell. The biggest impact right now is being taken place on multifamily, office leases, retail, restaurant. No doubt about that. One in four hotel loans across the country are in default. It's more extreme than some of the other areas out there. But you see the same thing in Pittsburgh. One in five, one in four retail loans are currently in default, whether it is from a CMBS or a traditional bank. Office vacancy is set to increase to roughly about 20% across the country. If we're seeing that numbers on average being about the same in Pittsburgh, uh, expect to see at least 15 to 20% vacancy rates for retail and restaurant space. And that number to stay the same, if not increase, you're also expecting to see an increase in uh, loan. I mean, sorry, rents are expected to drop 10 and percent by year end, and it'd be another, you know, five to 10% going into next year. So what does that mean? Well, that means you're picking up a commercial property of some sort. You got to expect your rents to be roughly at 80% of where they're at as of today. Okay. Or they at, where they were at the beginning of the year because of the fact, the vacancy factors that, that when you have higher vacancy and less cash flow, your cap rates drop or your NOIs drop that reduces your cap rate, reduces your value. So values are dropping expect to see 10, 20% or more, um, by the end of the year. I would say more by the end of the year, especially in some different asset classes, okay? Going into next year, it's gonna take a while. Right now, people are kind of in between. You have those that have the debt on their books, like, ah, uh, I know I need to take a discount. And then you got investors like, ah, uh, I'm not willing to go up to where you're at. You need to come down a little bit more because the longer this drags out, the worse it's gonna get. We all know that. Um, you know, some definitely some chains there in the Pittsburgh area. You know, this is exact, I could lose its Pittsburgh hotels to its lender. This is the Homewood Suites, uh, South Point in Washington County, one, three hotel, local, local hotels would be facing foreclosure. That's no surprise. That's no surprise out there. Um, real estate investors should look beyond the distressed CMBS loans because that's where uh, all the flash has been. Oh, uh, commercial is on the CMBS guys, the big guys. Yeah, they finance a lot of stuff, but it's not like it was a, dec a decade ago. What you see happening now is that a lot of the banks have gotten into this lending aspect of it. Roughly, the banks have actually financed over the last two years, 53% of the distressed stuff right now, 53% of it. And they're not lending at 100%, everybody. They're lending roughly at 60, 65, 70% because they're at a pretty, pretty decent LDV. But if you don't know how commercial bank works, they don't want to be above 70% LTV. Usually at 60 to 65, as it says here in the article. But when the values drop, because rents drop and vacancy drops, that means your value drops. So if the values drop 10 or 20%, the bank is going to require the borrowers to show up with 10 or 20% in cash to write down the loan. Well, we all know if you're out of business, you don't have the 10 or 20%. So you're going to see a lot of delinquencies happen. The banks are willing to move this stuff off their books because they don't want to take it back if this drags out any further and it continues to go in. We know commercial market space is going to be uh, hit hard here for a while, especially if we don't travel, if people continue to work from home via Zoom versus actually spending time out in, in a variety of uh, asset classes across the country. So at least a lot of opportunity to be able to come in, provide some capital, do some workouts with existing tenants or borrowers, and buy the debt cheap enough, which you already stuff is already on sale. It gives you a, a lot of flexibility in trying to reposition the property in a variety of ways. Okay. Now, banks, are expected, this just came out, uh, banks are expected to lose about $48 billion on the commercial real estate space. That's just on the commercial real estate space, it's not on the residential space. Uh, Bank of America set, started setting aside reserves uh, for their soured loans. And this article talked about Wells Fargo's being hit hard as well. PNC Bank's also been hit well, American Express. Uh, some of the others out there, Citibank Chase. Bank of America's share is roughly about 5.1 billion, okay? 
Arkell's newly out. Really, when they announced what they were setting aside and what they expected to lose, ouch. Now, the thing is, they've had some time to evaluate their loans. While we've been sitting at home, they've done the same thing by looking at portfolio. They're going to continue to look at their portfolio over the next 90 days until there's moratoriums by the government. And then that'll give them an opportunity to identify opportunities either on borrowers that have been paying that they can keep or borrowers that aren't paying or properties that are in their red zone, in the negative zone, that they need to look to move off their books. So where are their opportunities? Like I said before, if you're waiting around for foreclosures or real estate owned, you're going to be waiting a while, 12 to 18 months to find something that goes through the foreclosure process and it eventually shows up. It doesn't make sense to do that. Fix and flips. A lot of the private uh, lenders have pulled their money back to purchase assets versus lending out. A lot of the hard money lending lenders have uh, suspended for a while. So being in the fix and flip play space, I would not want to be in. Rental space. Eh, I don't know if I'd want to be in the rental space right now. There's a lot of people that are struggling. It's going to take a while to evict. And depending on which state, which county, which city you're in, there's, there's programs that are different across the board. Obviously, Pittsburgh has obviously delayed it through the end of August, which is a good thing. But, you know, I don't think I'd want to be in the rental market, especially the short-term rental side, which has been, as the uh, president of Airbnb said, it took basically six weeks to wipe out six years of growth in the Airbnb, the RBO space, okay? The real opportunity is in the debt game. And this is in the buying the debt, buying the mortgages from the banks, on residential commercial properties, and then doing a variety of things of working out. Uh, the fact that you can buy this debt at big discounts gives you a lot of flexibility to work to keep the borrowers in place. Now, you're already going to start seeing residential notes start to pop up in the fourth quarter. We're already starting to see some right now from Wall Street and also some of the banks have been reaching out. It's been funny. My e inbox has been flooded with requests and connections from asset managers at different banks across the, in co the country. Very funny. PNC, PHA, both had asset managers that reached out to connect with me recently, which I had not done. So it was interesting to see that. But you're already starting to see commercial notes come across the book, come across the desk right now. I've had several people reach out to me as I was talking with them and back and forth. And a lot of my commercial guys have said, Scott, we're seeing deals that we haven't seen in years. We're seeing more stuff in the last 60 days than we've seen in the last two or three years. Phenomenal deals. And a lot of the bigger guys, the billionaires, the guys out there, they've seen this. They've pulled back on financing and purchasing assets for the last 12 to 24 months. So they're cash reserves. So they can dive in now and start buying before the year is out. That's going to leave a lot of opportunity for investors like you and me. And I'll talk about that in a second. Now, what are they doing? Well, they're buying assets that they can reposition. Or if they've got assets that are hit hard, they're looking for different ways to pivot the asset. Here's a great example. This is a uh, hotel out of Arlington, Illinois. Uh, the, the borrower, the property owner on this, knew it wasn't going to be well. He said what he did is he, he was one of the first ones to pivot and take his hotel instead of shutting down for two or three months like other places have. Like a lot of the hotels in Pittsburgh did, they literally closed for two months for the most part. He turned it into apartment complexes and sold it off and made a, a, a bunch of money. Our buddy Garrison Gilbert's doing this in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, actually, turning a 55-room uh, hotel into a 42-bedroom apartment complex. Everything's basically done there. Just got to reposition some of the amenities and the other things as well to get to work. Um, you could also see office spaces struggling to be filled. Uh, you'd be like this guy in Denver. He took a 107 unit office building and turned it into self storage, downtown self storage. And it came out smelling gold on this stuff. Got it really leased up really fast being the self storage side versus new office space because offices are gonna need a place to store their stuff as they downsize, as they move for temporary, uh, you know, whether it's six months or nine months or three months, people need a place to move their stuff to. Now, my guys are telling me the biggest opportunity for real estate investors right now, okay, for local investors across the country is in a commercial asset space of two and a half million in value and below that, okay? Because if you can buy that stuff, that's the stuff that's clogging up all the bank's arteries. That's the stuff that the big guys don't want to take a look at. It's the stuff that you have a lot of local entrepreneurs, local businesses in that can give you a lot of flexibility. If you're buying that debt cheap enough, 30, 40, 50, 60 cents on the dollar, still gives you a lot of flexibility to keep somebody in that place and then ride the wave back up as the market rebounds for 12 to 24 months. As rents go up, your value is going to go back up. You're only going to be paying off of 50, 50 cents of as is value, current value, not past value out there. Okay. So are there banks in trouble? Yes, we all know that there's banks in troubles. 
one of the things that we look at on a regular basis is something called the Bauer Financial List. And this is a quarterly report that's put out by Bauer Financial. They rank banks, credit unions. We look at the bank side of things. And there's thousands of banks on this list all across the country. Now, we all know that there are thousands of banks that lend in Pennsylvania alone, but on this list, there are 96 banks that have their main office, main focus in Pennsylvania. Pretty good chunk. Okay, now out of the 96 banks based in Pennsylvania, all right, they have a combined basically of a billion dollars in distressed debt that's at least 90 days in default. And another additional right about nine, uh, you know, 900 million to write about another billion in loans that are 30 to 89 days late as of June. Now, July, August, September, when the new list comes out, I expect us to see 2 billion, if not more. So that's what I'm trying to get at everybody. There's this rolling wave. Yes, the banks can kick the can down the road for a month or two or a quarter or two, but at some point, especially getting into the fourth quarter here in the next 60 days, banks will be looking to get the stuff off their books. Now, uh, if you average that across the board, it's roughly about 5%, 4.5% default average per bank. Some are doing better than others. That's no surprise, but every bank has got some distressed stuff. Okay. Uh, two of the biggest contributors to this number is First National Bank of Pennsylvania. They've got 138 million in 90 day default and an additional 127 million in that 30 to 89 day late aspect of it. And then you have Fulton Bank has 140 million in 90 day default and 71 million in 30 to 89 day defaults. Now, uh, a lot of that's in the commercial side. Roughly 70, 75% of that is in the commercial side for both banks and the commercial assets. Now, yes, you do have residential assets on those and those aren't the Bank of America's chases or cities. You're not gonna buy a one-off note from those guys, especially on the residential side. You might be able to buy it from the commercial side of things, but these two guys have stuff on both ends. And trust me, banks, when they've got distressed stuff, longer stuff, they're often willing to negotiate, especially if they're in a longer foreclosure state like Pennsylvania, okay? So why would you wanna buy distressed debt? I get this question a lot. Why would I wanna invest in distressed debt? Because of a couple of things. One, uh, you can start buying deals now versus waiting around for it to foreclose. When a bank gets to foreclosure, a bank sells an asset off at the foreclosure auction, they've got a lot of investment to it. They're not gonna take a big a discount as they would by selling the debt off now and letting somebody else deal with it for the next six to 12 months, okay? And the fact is if you've gotta take six to 12 months to deal with it, you can buy this debt at significant discounts depending on the location, the foreclosure time frame, the values, the condition, the asset class is struggling. You can buy this stuff often really, really cheap, somewhere between 30 and 70% off, and then either A, start controlling the asset is a nice thing, working with the borrowers, or in a lot of cases, you know, working out some sort of payment plan, loan reinstatements, modifications, short sales, short payoffs, foreclosures, loan sales. Somebody asked me the other day, so, well, Scott, what if they just file bankruptcy? That's a good thing. They file bankruptcy, it's gonna be a loan mod or it's gonna be take the property back basically for the most part. Or you can take it over to receivership and start collecting the rents if they're collecting rents. That's the little thing about commercial notes. Now, one of the great things out there too is, look, if you wanna take over the note, you can turn it into cash flow by either getting into a reperforming note, in a reperform, or if you want it and take the property back and keep it long-term, you can do that. Take over the property, foreclose, cash for keys, and do what you want with it. You know, what you have to realize is when you're buying that debt, the borrower isn't on, isn't let go. If you bought that note at 50 cents on the dollar, the borrower still owes the full value, full unpaid balance. And so where we make our money in the distressed debt side of things is doing that workout. So we actually make more money by keeping people on the property. Now we all know that there's a vacancies, rents or reductions that goes into your favor by a, First and foremost, decreasing the value of the property. So it decreases what you pay for the loan to a percentage point that makes sense that gives you a really good comfortable thing. But also commercial debts, the banks I guarantee are knowing what's going on right now. They're seeing the rents, they're seeing the rent rates because they're looking at this stuff because if they're at 70%, okay? Think about this, they're at 70% of LTV and things have dropped 20%. That means they're now at, they're now at like 84% instead of 70%. So they're willing to take probably a 20, 30, 40% discount right off the bat to move stuff depending on where it's at. So keep that in mind in a variety of things. Now, there are some advantages of note investing. For many investors, I know many real estate investors when they get into real estate, they struggle because they don't have the capital for mailing and marketing. And that's where most people teach is a, hey, drop a thousand postcards, drop, put out a hundred bandit signs a week, 
Let's go door knocking. Let's put send out a lot of yellow letters. We don't do that in the dead game. We're not mailing postcards or letters at all. It's, it's not worth it because we're dealing with the banks, okay? If you can send emails, if you can reach out on LinkedIn to the decision makers or pick up the phone and dial for dollars, all that stuff's pretty re relatively inexpensive. But the beautiful thing is that if we get a bank on the hook, we're not looking just at one property. We're often getting a list on a regular basis, a quarterly basis, a monthly basis of what's on their books that they want to move. It's not, oh, one letter, you know, a thousand letters to get four phone calls or 40 phone calls to get one deal. Then I got to do it all the rinse and repeat every month. No, no, no. You make a contact to source, you sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, boom. Banks are going to be sending you stuff and they're not going to be asking you how much you can buy just to buy something, which is like what it was 10 years ago. Okay, now, if there's stuff on the list that you can cherry pick, great cherry pick. They're usually not going to ask you to buy a whole portfolio. They're going to ask you to buy something. But if you can buy in bulk, two, three deals or more, specific area, maybe take some of the bad with the really good ones to reduce, uh, to help them out in a variety of ways, you can often get really awesome pricing. And the fact is that you're a local investor, you know the local market, your local relationships, beats the heck out of what the, the bank is doing where they may have an asset manager covering multiple states. They may not know exactly what's going on with that asset, right? And you can do this for residential commercial assets, we know where to look. By just looking at some of the things that we teach or lists that we pull on a regular basis, you can often find plenty of assets out there for you to take a bid at. I mean, look, like I said, you don't have to have the capital yourself. There's, you can raise capital from other investors to fund these purchases. So in, in a lot of cases, the banks will, on that million dollar value or greater, oftentimes will, would love to keep that known on their books. So may even be willing for you to finance that new 60% or you bring only 20, 30% down um, to take the loan over and go from there. We've seen it happen quite a bit, all right? Now, the thing to keep in mind, everybody, there was 15 million homeowners underwater in 2010. We're about three to four million in commercial distressed debt at the same time. We're going to probably see a bigger amount of commercial debt this time compared to last time, all right? Lots of advantages to note investing. There's a lot of things. You're literally getting access front row VIP pass to the fountain of deals versus having to wait 12 to 18 months for it to trickle down to you. And I, you know, I don't mind living off of crumbs of the big boys there's some big crumbs and some big deals that you can make in the note space, all right? And there are investors out there. We always love to pull this number. We're able to pull a uh, number of investors and actually contact information. And, you know, there's, a, there's literally $9 trillion in retirement funds out there across the country in IRAs and retirement accounts. Now, in Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh itself, there's 27,000 investors alone with an IRA. They've got a self-directed IRA account of some sort whether it's with a self-directed trustee or it's with a Scott trade, but there's 27,000 investors with an IRA right now. Okay. There's going to be a lot more as that layoffs, people move their 401ks into IRAs as well. But now out of that 27,000, there's 17,000 of them that have at least 150 grand or more in their accounts. And what do you think they're looking for? They're looking to put that money to work because most of the money in IRAs is sitting at zero to 4%. They want to invest. They want to get their money working for them, not since they're losing appreciation, okay, losing value on a daily basis. Now, if you don't want to raise capital, that's fine. Just as you're getting deals in, start marketing the deals for wholesale or to other people that are looking for deals. Because in Pittsburgh alone, there's 31,000 people that call themselves a real estate investors on their tax returns of all types, okay? Seriously, plenty of people out there to take the deals off their hands, including this guy right here, Okay are gonna help you move that and still make something for your time versus nothing at all. And it, I'll tell you right now, everybody, wholesale on notes is just like wholesale on property if you ever had to do that. Plenty of investors out there to look, you just gotta know where to look and how to con connect with them, all right? Now, the question I always ask people, do you wanna be the bank or the borrower? Now, most of you are already in the note game. Actually, I think all of us are in the note game. You've got, if you've got a mortgage, a car payment, student loan debt, credit cards, IOU to Bubba down the road, you're paying money out on a monthly basis. That's not the right side of the note business, not the right side of the cash flow. You want to have payments coming into you. You don't want to deal with toilets, tents, and trash outs. You want to be picking out paint and carpet, all right? You want to be the bank because the banks are the biggest buildings. They're not in the fix and flip space. They're not in the short-term rental. Nobody calls the bank when little Timmy flushes his rubber ducky down the toilet and it clogs, okay? The bank always wins, ladies and gentlemen. And most people think that you can't be a bank, but you can. 
I've had big banks from Capital One and Wells Fargo multifamily uh, to little smaller, like, you know, smaller community banks as well, send me notes, send me their lists. They're looking to move this stuff because they need to get it off their books. And the bank always wins, ladies and gentlemen. There's never been a better time to start diving in than right now because most people are going to sit around with their thumb or sitting on their thumbs or their hands not doing anything. Now's the time to put that groundwork so that the fourth quarter and 2021 are amazing. All right, there's so many opportunities out there. So how do you tap into the tsunami of deals, everybody? Well, that's not hard. You know, I've been teaching real estate investors about notes since 2010. We've got thousands of videos online for you guys to take a look at. We've got a podcast, just 100 plus episodes. I've helped thousands of investors purchase their first note, whether it was performing or a non-performing note, okay? And I've done residential, I've done commercial. Back when I got started buying notes in 2008, it was mostly commercial debt. Straight from Capital One, what's in your wallet? Okay, Wells Fargo commercial. Uh, even looked at a portfolio of Bank of America commercial notes in, in San Antonio before. And I don't care what it is, whether it's you're looking for cash flow, which is what we all look for, so we can just kind of chill, or you're looking to do grow your portfolio with asset growth. Either way, you can do this with the note business out there. And you can do this with buying off one-offs or bulk banks. Like I said, prefer to sell commercial deals. They'll sell them all day in a one-off bulk basis. Uh, and the residential side, they may be looking to move, especially the bigger the bank, the bigger the portfolio they're looking to move on the residential side. But on the commercial side, most of them do one-offs all day long. And we've seen trades anywhere from 25 grand up to 5 million. Remember, I mentioned that that biggest asset class, biggest opportunity for investors like you and me is commercial assets direct from banks that finance this stuff at that 2.5 million mark or less. Now, uh, the cheapest I paid for a note was 7 bucks. Bought it and I flipped it for 5 grand the next day. I bought 184 assets at one point. I bought high-end apartment complexes. I bought 300 units hotel, a 300 plus unit apartment complex. Guys, there are opportunities out there and hey, the world's on sale right now, especially the United States. And the bank doesn't give a rat's ass what your credit is. They don't care if you're currently in forbearance agreement on your own mortgage. They don't look at that stuff. What they wanna know is, hey, do you have the cash, okay? And it doesn't have to be your own funds. Do you have other people's money? Do you have a team? Are there vendors out there that you've got put together to take care of this? And that's the case. Great, you can. The vendors are not hard to find out there. And like I said, everybody, you can dive into this and start doing deals with email, LinkedIn, and phone. If you know how to market, and I teach people how to market more than anybody else does. A lot of people are like, oh, you got to buy from me or the banks won't buy. Banks won't sell to you because you're too small. That's a bunch of bullshit because the banks will sell to you. The banks sold the assets to me when I didn't have two nickels to rub my rubbed together at one, one point, and they still have done that over and over and over all across the country over the last 12 years. There are deals that you can tap into, and 99% of the deals that I have funded have been with other people's money from banks that didn't give it, never checked my credit score, didn't care what the hell I'd been through. They just want to know that I could fund the deal and move into it, okay? So like I said, whatever your focus is, whether it is single family homes, apartment complexes, hotels, retail office, self-storage, hotels, motels, mobile home parks, whatever your asset class is that you're looking for that you like, guess what? They're available out there for you. You can truly create win-win scenarios like we did for this borrower. Been trying to do a loan mod for four years. Her house was, oh, she owed twice in her house where the house was worth because of the market dropped in, okay? She didn't do anything bad. She was working to try to stay in her house. Husband had a heart attack, wasn't working. And there's nothing greater than being able to work with a borrower to keep them in their house. Is you end up making more money that way, get a higher return on your investment and return on your time. I don't want to get into rehabs. I don't want to deal with toilet sits and trainer shots. I want to keep somebody in the house who's got some pride of ownership, who wants to stay there and wants to work. And there are roughly about four to eight million borrowers out there right now that want to stay in their, their house. There's also roughly about three to four million commercial uh, tenants or commercial borrowers that want to keep their property. They've just been dealt a bad thing. Well, guess what? You buy the debt. You can step in and, and really create a lot of good wins, whether it's something like that, salt of the earth, homes across the country, something fancy like beachfront condos like these in San Diego that we took down, maybe like a smaller apartments or bigger apartments. There are assets all across the country that you can dive into and get lists sent to you on a regular basis. Now, I don't care what your experience is. You can do it big or do it small. Start off small and go big. Completely fine. You can do like our buddy Gene here, all right? Gene Chandler out of Indiana is one of our students, done an amazing job. When I first met him about four years ago, he was an investor, 
buying you know, little properties of what he could do with what his own funds. He was scared to raise capital. He was scared to go big, all right, or to get outside of his little zip code. All right, when we spent some time with him, we showed him how notes work. We taught him how to do things, and he went, this, this blossomed and done a great job. Stopped basically being a hot shot uh, driver in just Indiana there. Basically has taken it from small to big time. Big time in that he's raised $13 million and closed on over 135 deals. He's put over seven figures in his pocket and doing an amazing job. And we're very proud of what Gene does. It'd be like Laura Blunk here who's also started off like many investors, going to different classes, different workshops, trying to figure out what's going to work, what didn't work in the markets. Here in Austin, Texas, it's a competitive market where she's from. All right. Well, she learned a note business from us, bought roughly about 15, 16 assets in her first 18 months. And then, boom, she's done over 100 deals now and is also looking at closing in another, a, a trade of over 100 assets at roughly about $4 million with other people's money. That's going to be life-changing for her. She was just able to move into her dream house on the water in Maryland. We're so proud of what she has done and accomplished. Uh, you'd be like, Keith Collins got a lot of experience in real estate and also other things. Uh, government, I think he was the mayor of a small town in, in Ohio, uh, built a lot of water treatment plants and other things. But when he learned a note business from us roughly about three years ago, he really took to it like a duck on water, okay? And has done well. I got an email from him the other day saying, Scott, thank you so much for what you've taught us. He and his wife cleared seven figures last year alone in 2019. Uh, he is excited about what's going on because he knows the opportunities exist all across the country, just not in Ohio where he's at. All right. Now that's great. If you've got experience, guess what? This is a pretty easy business to understand. If you've got some real estate experience. You can be coachable. There's, it's a different mindset and different numbers you look at than being a fix and flipper or a rehabber. But guess what? It's not that hard to figure this out because we teach you how to, the correct way to do it, how to approach things, what to say, what not to say so that you can start taking deals down, just like our buddy Raf here from San Diego does. Raf had no real estate experience whatsoever. Didn't own a home. He rented a place in San Diego, never bought or sold a property, fixed and flipped it. In his words, San Diego is too damn expensive. Now, he was a successful entrepreneur, owned a car detailing business in Chula Vista there with 15 full-time employees. And lucky for him, he started taking uh, an interest in notes before everything happened with COVID. And in his first 30 days, I think he started in November, December, first 30 days, he bought five deals, got two of them reperforming, two of them process being sold, and the fifth one he's working out right now. But he's, he's going to double his money. And he's like, Scott, I wish my staff would take the time to learn it. So he had to lay his whole staff off because nobody wants to detail a car when they can't drive anywhere. He's like, I'm not worried about it. You know, I want to help them, but I'm not worried about it. I may never open back up again because I love what I'm doing. And, uh, just absolute overjoyed at what he's doing. I actually spoke with him today on getting a, a document uh, signed and notarized to him so he could help sell an asset out there that he's doing for double what he paid for it. So like I said, whether you're small or wanting to do it big, you got some big goals or you've got a little experience, you're like, what the hell am I doing? I need somebody to help guide me along the way. I would love to have you, love to help you because I've done it for so many investors out there, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds over the last 12 years. And how do they do it? and take our training and we do our training online. And the first step for a lot of people is, you know, they're a little apprehensive of where to begin. You know, what we did, we created a one day kind of get your feet wet training called Note Weekend. This is a one day training, it's yours truly. No, it's not a pitch fest, but it's literally me spending time from in the morning to later in the afternoon going through the Cliff Notes version of note investing. You can go to noteweekend.com. We offer this just about every third Saturday of the month. Uh, noteweekend.com. You can see the schedule. You can see the, the next classes. But look, here's what we go through, guys. This is a one-day online training. We call it a mini workshop. You're not going to learn everything about the note business in eight or nine hours. You're going to learn a nice chunk of it so you understand. And if you want to take it to the next level, great, you can. If not, you walk out of the class. You're knowledgeable. Hey, notes aren't for me. It's totally fine. Notes aren't for everybody. Okay, um, we live stream it live like this on Zoom on Saturday. We restream the videos on Sunday. So if you got to step out for an hour or got to spend time with the kids or family, can't make it on Saturday, guess what? The replays are there for you. Our students call it the Cliff Notes version of note investing because we really do go into the different aspects that you need to know to start building knowledge upon that. And if you're going to build a big house, you got to good, start with a good foundation. And this is where it's at, Okay. Uh, you, there's things you don't need to know in, immediately in the note business. You just need to know a lot of the basics to build upon that. 
okay? And normally we charge 99 bucks, we drop it down to 49, cut it in half price for you. Uh, we'll go from at least nine to three, sometimes four, five, six, seven o'clock, depends on how many people are in the class, how many questions get asked, but it's yours truly teaching the entire thing. And then I also include about another 10 hours of videos and webinars that we've done with vendors and other tools that you'll want to use in your note business or other extra training that you can launch at your leisure. Now, you can go to noteweekend.com. We've got class in August. We've got a class in September. I think we'll have a class in October or November. We're going to have a full three-day workshop at one of those weekends. But you can join up and get signed up for as little as 49 bucks, guys and gals. That's not repeat. Sign up for once. Catch the replays. What do we cover? Well, we cover basics uh, right off the bat. We're going to teach you how to find the deals. What banks have it? Where do you find this? How do you pull this list? Literally, in the first couple hours, you'll probably walk out already have 2,000 plus contacts that you can start reaching out to at banks and hedge funds, okay? With billions in distressed debt in their books. We'll show you how to do that and I'll, I'll share with you why. Second thing we do is talk about how to raise capital and fund these deals with OPM. We, talk to you how, we teach you how to tap into local real estate investors in your market, self-directed guys. You literally go to the county records and, and appraisal district or the clerk's office and find investors that are looking for deals. And we'll show you how to pull those deals absolutely for free. Um, we'll talk about the different exit strategies, how to make money. There's basically 10, 11 different ways on the residential, about 10 to 12 different ways on the commercial side to make money. So we'll break down some of those different ways to make money on it. Not difficult at all. You just got to know what kind of way, which way the deal goes. And every deal is kind of like a country western song. You never, which, never know which way it's going to turn. And we go through how to look at those, make, see, make sure it's a deal and not a dud. Uh, how to narrow down when you get lists and how to reduce that list down so you don't have to waste your time on stuff that's not going to make sense for you, okay? I will talk about the different vendors and the team members that you'll need to help you out with stuff like due diligence or servicing or closure. Guess what, everybody? You're not going to be the jack of all trades that goes out and fixes the door, paints the carpet, paints the wall or puts carpet in and mows along. We don't do that in the note space. There are vendors, there are servicers, there's real estate attorneys to help you out with it. And we'll show you how to tap those, tap into those sources and how to find those people and then also how to get your funders to fund that aspect of your deal flow, okay? We'll also talk about the different loan trading platforms. I think you start looking at commercial and residential deals today, not wait six months, but start looking at stuff today to make offers or start honing your due diligence or your skill set by looking at case studies and, and deciding if it's a deal or not. We'll also cover a lot more things. Like I said, I'm there as long as you're asking questions. We also leave the, usually the last 45 minutes to the hour of the day to do some virtual networking where we find out more what you're looking for, what sit states, what cities are you interested in, what's your focus. And we go through a lot of that stuff as well. And so like I said, all that's included in what we cover for just 49 bucks. All right, not meant to get rich off this thing. It's meant to be a little bit of investment in your part for me to spend eight hours with you going through and teaching you what I know. All right, now one of the beautiful things guys, if that's not good enough for you, Let's throw in some bonuses. Let's make it even juicier uh, for you to show up for a, a day with me and for just 49 bucks, okay? So what do we do? Like I said, we've cut the, the, the full day class in half from 99 to 49. We also will throw in a full one day. Well, it's actually about four to five hour of me calling banks, of you literally being a fly on the wall and seeing who I'm calling, seeing the banks that I'm talking to, hear the conversations, hear me get hung up on, hear me say, oh, we don't have anything or hear me overcome objections and get transferred to the right department. You'll see that that's usually about a four to five hours. We charge $49 for that for a live thing that's included, plus the replays the next one. We actually do uh, a live bank call and use about four to five days after the class. It's usually a Wednesday after the class. Um, I talked about the Bauer Financial List, how we pulled those numbers for Pennsylvania. I'm gonna throw in the most recent quarterly report to you with over 2000 banks, how they rank, what percentage is in their default, how much in residential, how much in commercial, how much in multifamily loans are in default, what percentage, what kind of star rating are they? Are they zero stars to five stars, all right? The person in charge, okay? And then their main corporate number. That's included, that usually costs somewhere around 350 to 400 bucks. It cost me this recently, this last month, sorry, this last quarter, 360. Because I usually will track banks that are five branches or higher and don't waste my time with the smaller banks. But that list is worth price of admits already, okay? Um, I always schedule a phone call, 30-minute phone call with those that attend, just to get a feel for where you're wanting to go to help you identify, maybe streamline your focus. Because some people are like, oh, I want to focus just on 
uh, LA knows. I'm like, no, L L Los Angeles knows probably not where you want to be at. There's other better ways to do it. So helping you kind of get off on the right path. I charge a thousand dollars per hour for consulting. So that's a $500 value right there for you. We also throw in, if you've got your spouse, an existing business partner that you want to throw on there. Like I said, the replays are included. That's included. And then one of the most valuable things we have is our private Facebook group. Uh, with just our students, roughly about 900 members, uh, students that are there to help support you, ask questions. Hey, I need somebody to go drive by a house. Or who's a good attorney or a good realtor? Hey, can somebody look at this deal for me? It's a great, great thing. That one's, I don't know the price on that, but we include that as a way for you guys to network and work with other you know, investors out there. All that's included, like I said, for just 49 bucks, okay? No monthly fee after that. If you want to take one of our other classes, like a three-day class, you can apply that 49 towards that cost. I also have a uh, guaranteed money back. If you find at the end of the day, like, oh, Scott, this is not worth it, then I'll refund your money back. Um, as long as you ask for that before I send the bonuses out. So, but basically, like I said, get in the first day like that. Ah, this is not for me, Scott. I don't want to do this. I'll gladly refund your money back and wish you well. And, and we'll part as friends. Okay. But like I said, all of that included for just 49 bucks to help you tap into the notes, help you to find residential deals, to find commercial deals. Now, everybody, it's time to start tapping into like, so like I said, whatever your goal is, whether it's to retire, to retire your spouse, to put your kids through college, to retire your parents, to travel more, or just to buy bigger toys or bit better off your life. It takes money to do this. And being in the money business, in the paper business, always pays well. And like I said, I'd love to have you guys be a part of the thousand that we're looking to help train and help them take their real estate business to the next level over the next 12 months, just for 49 bucks to get started. Let's get you started. Let's get you rocking and rolling and make the most out of our note weekend training for you. So like I said, you can go to noteweekend.com and get signed up there today. You'll automatically get the replays to the previous workshop that we did last month. You get those so you can start watching them so you can ask better questions when the, the, the live class comes around. So but guys, take advantage of that right now. That $49 price will not probably stick around much longer. Um, but those bonuses, guys, we're giving you over a thousand, roughly about, uh, I think $1,500 in value on those extra bonuses that you can actually tangibly see what they are individually. So I wanna open it up for any questions or comments that you guys might have as we get rocking and rolling in here. And I'd love for you guys to be part of our note weekend class. There's not any questions. I want to thank you guys, but check it out, noteweekend.com. I see a few of you guys already signed up already, which is awesome. Honored to have you guys there. Uh, look forward to, to spend some time with you here in the next couple of weeks. Be safe, have a great day, and thanks for being a part and showing up tonight.